Hi guys, I'm going to take you through the compounding and polishing process as well as the ceramic coating process I did on this car to achieve this result. If you find this video helpful, please give a like and remember to subscribe to my channel. This is a 2014 Toyota Highlander that I have done a complete exterior detail job on. This include rust prevention, paint touch up, replacement of clear coat, compound and polish, installation of 3M protection film, as well as ceramic coating. I will provide a link in the description below of the master video that outline all those processes. But in this video, I will take it through the compound, polish and ceramic coating process. Today is 7 days after I painted the bumper with a 2K clear coat. This car was washed yesterday, so I'm here just using a grease and wax remover. So now, I will be wet sanding the bumper to remove some orange peel. I will be starting with 1500 grit sandpaper, then I move up to 2000 and then finish with 3000. To avoid burning through the clear coat, I will be using this soft sponge. So while I'm sanding, I'll be using a little soapy water for lubrication. Try to be careful at the edges because those are the places that can burn out very easily. And this is the finished result after I completely wet sand the bumper. Now the bumper is ready for polish and compound. So these are all the products that I'll be using. This is a MacShine M15 Pro dual action polisher. It's a 5 inch. So this is the Maguire lubricant and that is used for the clay bar. This is the Gian Quartz Prep. It is a very good alcohol based wipe to remove all grease from the car. This is the Skull Concept S20 Black which is a compound that gives a good finish. But you will need a very aggressive pad to get good result from this compound which I didn't have. So I had to get the Maguire compound. This is the Maguire Polish which is a very good polish. This is an iron remover which will help to chemically remove deep contaminants in the paint, the 4i clay bar. This is the Rain-X windscreen coating and this is used for the windscreens and all the glass. This is CarPro C-Quartz UK, this is a ceramic coating and this is Maguire clay bar. So these are all the products I'll be using to detail the exterior of this car. I will compound and polish the car in two days. So today I will only be doing the front of the car and tomorrow I will be doing the rest of the car. I will first remove all contaminants from the paint. This will be done by first washing the car with dishwashing soap because this is very effective on grease. This iron remover was sprayed on the paint while it was wet to remove deep contaminants from the paint. This should be washed off before it dries on the paint. So I am using a clay bar lubricant to lubricate the clay while rubbing on the paint to remove particles. After you finish with a section, you need to keep folding the clay bar to fold the contaminants on the surface of the clay bar into the clay bar. This will avoid scratches if the clay bar pick up any hard or solid particles. When you start rubbing the clay bar on the paint, you will notice that the paint is rough. Then after numerous passes of the clay bar over the paint, you will notice that it gets very smooth. That is an indication that the clay bar is working, that the area is completely clayed and ready to be compound. So the iron remover chemically removes contaminants from the paint and the clay bar mechanically removes contaminants from the paint. I am using quartz prep which is a alcohol based wipe to remove grease and grime from the surface of the paint. 
Now, it is important to use masking tape to mask off all creases before you start compounding process because the compound can be very messy and it likes to stick in small spaces. It is time for polishing and I will be using the Skull Concept S20 Black along with the Blue Max Shine Foam Pad. For the first section, I will be using 5 pea size drops to get the foam pad lubricated and for the other sections, I will be using only 3 pea size drops. To avoid the compound from splashing all over the place, I normally spread the compound over the work area. To prevent missing spots, work the polisher in a lateral and vertical pattern, making about 3 to 4 passes and one set of vertical makes one pass while one set of lateral would make the second pass then use a microfiber rag to remove the excess compound and inspect the finish of the paint so this combination of the skull concept s20 black and the max shine blue pad did not make much correction to the paint so i decided to make a second set of passes working in a smaller area while moving the polisher more slowly to increase the cut and after the second set of passes i did not see much change in the result so i went and got this consumer level maguire compound which made a world of difference the Maguire compound removed all defects in the paint while leaving the paint glossy which reduced the amount of polishing I will need at the end. And the weird thing was the Maguire compound cost 3 times less than the Skull Concept S20 Black. The Skull Concept S20 Black was designed to be a all-in-one compound to both compound and polish at the same time. That is not the ideal approach to get the best result. To achieve the best result is to compound your paint first and then polish. So the Maguire Ultimate Compound and the Maguire Ultimate Polish are great consumer level products that can be used on various paint types. They are very forgiving and they give great results. I highly recommend these two products and I can tell you the results way exceed the price. You want to move slowly and work in a horizontal and lateral pattern to not miss any area then you use a microfiber towel to clean the area you do your inspection and if you're pleased with the result you can move to the next section so after one pass i was very pleased with the result you do not want to compound too much because it's possible for you to burn through your clear coat that is something that you do not want to happen Now I'm going to move to the other section of the car. So what I did, I just worked my way around the bumper and I'm really loving the result that I'm getting right here. So polished and compound the headlights and I use this grinder with a 3 inch pad to work in these small areas.
So after I have completed the compound, the hood, the side panels and the bumper of this car, it's time to polish. So now I'm using a polishing pad, they are usually softer and I'll be using them this Maguire polish. Polishing is similar to compounding but the objective is different. When compounding, you're trying to remove defects while when polishing, you're just trying to improve the finish which is the gloss and some, you know, minor swirls or defects. So when polishing, your hand movement should be faster than when you're compounding. Now it's time to compound and polish the rest of the car. So at this point, the car is fully decontaminated. So the car was washed. Iron remover was used to remove contaminants. Clay bar was used to also remove contaminants. And the car was totally wiped down with a alcohol base wipe. I did not tape off the front of the car because it was already compound and polished the previous day. So I'll be working in cubes, making lateral and vertical passes. Then using the microfiber towel to clean the area. After cleaning the area, you do your inspection. If you're pleased with the result, you can move to the next section. And if you think it needs some more passes, you just repeat the process. I will also be compounding the windscreen. You can also compound all your lights, it makes them very shiny. Don't forget your roof. Compounding a car is very time consuming, but you just gotta be patient. This dual action polisher is very balanced. As you can see right here, I'm using one hand to reach on the top of the car at high speed. And the polisher is very steady. I recommend this polisher. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. So now it's time for polishing. Similar procedure, but using a polishing pad with a faster hand movement. As you can see the result guys, you can see how shiny the car is. At this moment, I'm actually polishing the 3M protection film because I am going to ceramic coat the 3M protection film to improve the finish. So now I'm removing all the tapes. And there are some small areas that the polisher won't be able to reach. You can use a microfiber towel with the compound to polish those small areas. It will take time but it will improve the result. So after finishing the compounding and polishing process, I gave the car a wash to remove compounds and polish that might still be in small areas. You need to have a very clean paint before you ceramic coat your car. So now it's time for ceramic coating. I'll be using this alcohol based wipe to completely wipe all grease from the paint. And this is a ceramic coat that I purchased on Amazon. That's the CarPro preload that is used like seven days after the coat has dried. The 
This is the ceramic coating. That's the foam applicator. These are some microfiber cloth for the application of the coating and this microfiber towel is for the application of the reload. So now I'm using the alcohol based wipe just to give the car a final wipe before applying the ceramic coating. This is a ceramic coating. I just apply in one straight line and then I take my time to apply the ceramic coating in overlapping passes, both horizontal and vertical so that you do not miss a spot. So your flash time will be determined by your weather condition. The warmer the weather, the shorter the flash time. You are not trying to remove the ceramic coating. You are using a microfiber towel just to level the ceramic coating. The colder the environment, the longer the flash time. If the temperature is cooler, you can apply the ceramic coating to two sections. And by the time you finish with the second section, it's time to level the first section. If you feel the microfiber towel sticking to the car while leveling the ceramic coat, it means that you took too long. But if you know notice that the ceramic coating is still wet while trying to level the ceramic coating that means that you need a longer flash time so your environment will highly determine your flash time so right now I'm doing two sections so by the time I'm finished with the second section the first section need to be leveled and by the time I finish leveling the first section the second section need to be leveled and that's it guys, you just do this for the entire car including the lights and plastic trim and you use a microfiber towel to level the ceramic coating. I will be applying two coats of the ceramic coating. The second coat will be applied 60 to 90 minutes after the first coat. So it takes time to ceramic coat the entire car. So you need to make note of the time when you started and you go in a direction like from left to right or right to left. At the end of the first coat, check the time to see if it's 60 to 90 minutes from you started and then you can immediately start recoating those sections again. If you need more time to wait, you just can sit, have a drink and wait for that 60 to 90 minutes. This is the end result after applying two coats of C-Quart ceramic coating. I'm really pleased with the result. One key thing to note, you should avoid water touching the ceramic coating at least 24 hours after you apply the ceramic coat. And this is seven days later and you can see how easily the water beads off the ceramic coat so i gave the car a first wash and this is time to apply the reload that's the end guys thank you for watching if you found this video helpful please give a like and remember to subscribe for similar videos see you on the next one guys